What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. So the intent of this video is to provide a high level sort of overview and discussion of the functions available with the wireless communication settings on the camera. So a tour of the network menus on your camera. Now I'm going to be getting into the wireless settings in much more detail in subsequent video, including how to configure various things and what various options, sort of getting into the weeds more. But I wanted to start with a video that covered the broad topics so that we were all kind of on the same page about what menus did what and where things were. Now as usual, the usual disclaimer does apply. Everything I'm going to cover in this video is, in fact, a software feature that is basically similar to what you will find on other Canon mirrorless cameras that include Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. So most of Canon's mirrorless cameras now, such as the R3 and R6. However, I own and use the EOS R5, and that's what I've used for testing and demonstration in this video. Consequently, if you're using one of Canon's other cameras with similar Wi-Fi capabilities, the experience and interface may differ slightly from what I'm showing. So one example of this is the EOS R7. It does not include FTP upload capabilities and instead includes direct Wi-Fi printing. So that will be different from what I am going to be covering in this video, and I won't be covering Wi-Fi printing because I don't have an EOS R7 to cover it with. So let's jump right into the menus and start going through the various settings. So the first setting I want to talk about or look at is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection menu page or menu, menu itself. This is at the top of the Network One menu, and this is where you will go to configure all of the external wireless communication options for your camera, pairing with uh, Bluetooth, connecting to Wi-Fi networks, etc. There are five aspects or areas or sub-menus, however you want to phrase it, in this menu, and these are just from you know, running across the list, essentially. Connecting to your smartphone, this includes tablets and basically any mobile device that runs Canon's Camera Connect software falls into this category. You will go here to connect to those devices. Remote control with Canon's EOS utility. This mirrors the connect to smartphone function, but it is where you will go to connect to a camera or to a laptop or desktop running Canon's EOS utility software as opposed to a smartphone. Connect to an FTP server. Obviously this is connect, allows you to connect and configure your uploads to or image uploads for an FTP server. I'm going to go into much more detail on setting this up and using this as it can be potentially useful in many circumstances or some circumstances at least. Upload to web service. As far as I understand it, this is currently only for image.canon, Canon's own proprietary web service, but for cameras like the R7 and R3, Uploading to image, uh, uploading to Canon's web service through this system will give you the ability to use their enhanced cloud-based raw processing capabilities that are not necessarily available for like the R5, for example. Now, the final option in the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection menu is to connect to wireless remotes. Now, I should note this is for Bluetooth remotes, not infrared remotes like Canon's RC5. That is controlled through a completely different area in the camera. Moving down to the next item in the Network One menu is airplane mode. So, airplane mode does what it sort of says. It temporarily disables the radios. Next up on the list are the Wi-Fi set is the Wi-Fi settings page uh, menu. And there's several options here, starting with enabling and disabling the Wi-Fi interface. In addition to having the ability to turn off all the inter radios or turn on and off all the radios in one shot with airplane mode, you can also enable or disable the wireless and Bluetooth radios independently. Moving down from the first uh, to the next option here is connection history. Now the connection history is a shortcut menu or a shortcut menu page that's displayed on the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection menu or in the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection menu that shows you the last three devices or services that you have connected to from your camera. So this could be very useful if you connect to a few devices frequently. So for example, maybe you only ever connect to your smartphone and a, a studio computer in your studio for like wireless tethering. 
if you have this enabled, those devices will show up and you'll be able to very quickly reactivate them when you go into the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth connection menu instead of having to go through the individual services and all of the various steps there. So it makes things a little faster. The next option down the line is send a smartphone after shot. And essentially this is an auto push service or capability that the camera, when it's tethered or connected to a smartphone over Wi-Fi, has the ability to, after you make an image, after every image you take, send an, that image to your smartphone automatically without you having to intervene and do anything. First setting here is enabling or disabling the auto send function. Obviously, if you have it set to enable, then the camera pushes the images to your smartphone. If you have it set to disable, then it doesn't do anything. The second option is the size that the image of the image that should be sent. And there's only two options here, either re original or reduced. Now, reduced doesn't tell us an awful lot. You kind of have to dig through the Canon, uh, the manual for your camera, but on the R5, reduced sends a size S2 JPEG, which works out to be about 3.8 megapixels or 2400 by 1600 uh, pixels. Original sends the original size image, including a RAW if you are doing RAW. The next menu down is the FTP transfer settings. Now, I am not going to get any into any detail here because I am going to cover the FTP transfer in much more detail in a subsequent video, but essentially this is where you can adjust and fine tune how your FTP transfers will work. Now, the final option in this menu is to display the camera's MAC address. Uh, essentially, the MAC address is the Wi-Fi chip's physical address on the wireless network that it's on. And it's necessary for low-level wireless communication protocols and stuff to happen. It's similar in a way to IP addresses, which we will talk about in the Wi-Fi configuration and setup videos, but it's at a much more sort of lower level in the entire process. Now, there is a reason why you would want to know what this is. Actually, there's a couple of reasons why you would want to know what this is. The, the first one is that some network administrators perform MAC address filtering on their wireless networks. They believe it's a means to increase the security of their network. And so essentially, only devices that they have added a MAC address for to their wireless access points can connect to their wireless access points. Now, this isn't a substitute, obviously, for encryption or anything like that. It's just an extra layer of allowing or controlling access to their network. So if you're in a situation where you are working somewhere and you need access to a network that's being run like that, you will need to be able to find your MAC address to be able to give that to the network administrators so that they can whitelist you on the network this is where you would go for that. The second and more pressing reason, if you're doing any of this stuff and you're not really dealing with other people's wireless networks, is because this is the most surefire way to identify your camera specifically when pairing with Canon's EOS utility on a desktop or laptop. The EOS utility pairing software will show you the MAC address, it will show you the IP address, but in most cases that's going to be dynamically assigned when the net camera connects to the network, and so you will have no idea what that IP address may or should be going into things. And the third thing will be the kind of camera, and if you don't, if you have multiple, say, R5s, you'll want to identify them by essentially the MAC address. So that's where you go, what you go here for. Next, we come to the Bluetooth settings menu. So this is essentially the equivalent of the Wi-Fi settings menu, but for the Bluetooth radios instead. Jumping into the Bluetooth settings menu, we have three options here. The first option, Bluetooth, allows you to enable or disable the Bluetooth radio. The second menu entry, check connection information, shows you the state of the Bluetooth radio. So if it's a device is paired, whether it's connected, etc. And the final option is the Bluetooth address, which is essentially the Bluetooth radio's equivalent of the Wi-Fi radio's MAC address. Moving down the network, uh, network one menu, we get to nickname. Nickname sets a custom name or ID for the camera. Now, as far as I've been able to tell in using my camera with software, with my computers, laptops, etc., pairing it with EOS, Canon EOS utility and Canon Camera Connect, the mobile app, the only place where I really see this come up is when you have paired it with a 
mobile device. In the Canon Camera Connect app, it will show up as there's some value in setting this so that you can identify your devices, but it doesn't seem to have a real significant impact on anything or a real significant amount of utility on anything involved in the pairing process or identification process. So the next menu down on Network One is GPS device settings, and this is where you go to configure the GPS options for your camera. Now there's three options, uh, well, there's a couple of options that show up here depending on how you configure things. So the first entry in this menu is the, whether it's disabled using a standalone GPS, which specifically means Canon's GPE2 GPS receiver, or is using a smartphone over Bluetooth. Now, one thing to note, even though I'm not going to talk an awful lot about GPS in this video or the GPE2 in any of the videos I do, the GPE2, at least according to the manual from Canon, must be placed in the hot shoe on the camera for this to work. You can't plug it into the USB port with a USB cable. At least that's what the manual says. Now, one reason you may consider wanting to use GPE2 over, say, your smartphone is, is assuming you want GPS data or geolocation data for your images, is that the GPE2 includes a digital or electronic compass. So in addition to providing latitude, longitude, and elevation, the GPE2 can also provide the direction that you were pointing the camera when you took the picture. So if you've selected standalone GPS for your for, for the first option here for the GPS, then you will see a menu that says set up GPS unit. This allows you to enter essentially the configuration options for the GPE2. These include things like setting the auto time setting, so whether the camera will get its time updated from the GPE2, the position interval, so how often the camera will receive position information or the GPE2 will do a position update enabling or disabling the digital compass, and of course, calibrating the digital compass. So that will all be in the setup uh, GPS unit menu. The final op menu option, and this will apply as long as you have enabled the GPS for either standalone or smartphone, is to view the GPS data. This will show you the current location, uh, you know, latitude, longitude, elevation, GPS time, a uh, variety of factors or stuff like that for the GPS. Now, the final menu item on the Network One image or the Network One menu is image transfer. And this is the mechanism where you can transfer images from the camera to a remote device from the camera. So you're pushing things out. There's a couple of menu options in here that you have the ability to choose from, the first of which is select and transfer images. This will prompt you. It has two options. One is direct, one is FTP. Direct applies to transferring to Canon's EOS utility on a computer, so you have to be running the EOS utility. It cannot be in the remote shooting mode or this will not work. You have to have it sort of in the, the upper level menu mode, but if the EOS utility is running and the camera is, is connected to it, you can use direct to transfer images to that. The other option is, of course, FTP. If you've connected to an FTP server, you can use the FTP option to transfer images through the FTP system. Now, I'm not entirely sure why Canon decided that they needed to have two entrance or two entries here, as you cannot uh, simultaneously connect to the EOS utility and the FTP or an FTP server. So there's really not a huge amount of utility in having two completely separate options. However, you can have different, you can, in the process of doing this, select different images to go from the, you know, go to the EOS utility through the direct thing versus to an FTP server. But I'm, I'm not quite aware, sure of why you would want to do that. Next menu option down is where you can select the raw or the image formats that are transferred when you are sending, I should say the next two options, are for to select the image formats that you send for various RAW plus JPEG or RAW plus HEIF configurations. So you can choose to send the RAW image, the JPEG image, or HEIF image, or both images in this through this menu. So this applies if you're shooting in RAW plus JPEG or RAW plus HEIF, where the camera sub, sub, simultaneously saves both a RAW and a compressed version of the image this will split those or gives you the capability to split those when transferring. 
The final option in the image transfer menu is to add captions to your images and transfer. Now, captions do have to be saved to your camera from uh, your PC through the Canon EOS utility, so you have to configure them ahead of time, download them to the camera, and then you can apply these pre-saved captions to your images as you're transferring them. You can't, unfortunately, type a caption in using an on-screen keyboard while you are on the camera. So you have to know ahead of time what you're going to be captioning things. Now, the final option in all of the network stuff is found on the Network 2 menu page, and it is Reset Communication Settings. And fundamentally, all this does is completely clear and reset all of the saved settings related to the camera's wireless communication capabilities. So it deletes the paired Bluetooth devices from the list in history. It clears your Wi-Fi networks and the saved passwords for those Wi-Fi networks. It clears any paired devices or services. So the imaging, image.canon, EOS utility, et cetera, FTP server configurations, all of that. And as I said, cloud services as well. This can be used, of course, for troubleshooting. If you're having a problem, you can always reset the wireless communication thing. It will go back to the factory defaults, which is nothing essentially. And then you can go back through and reconfigure everything as well. Additionally, if you were you know, I don't know, selling or giving away the camera, you can reset this to clear all the wireless stuff in addition to resetting the camera to factory defaults, defaults to clear all of your other settings. So that's an overview of all the menu options in the network's control or the network's menu pages. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.